Hey, what's poppin' people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome to today's Chelsea news video. Couple of big ones for you today. Interesting stories regarding realistic January signings for Chelsea Football Club that look like they could come off. As well as a big paper talk story that might not be the worst thing in the world once I explain some facts to you. Chelsea are looking at a young Nigerian-English striker we already got one of those, who looks like he could be in the player profile of Frank Lampard, and it kind of makes sense realistically in terms of the exits happening in January. And of course, there's this big news story that's been circulating around a couple of days that's come from Spain regarding N'Golo Kante's Chelsea exit next summer. Mm. We'll be talking about the pros and cons of our potential transfer out for N'Golo Kante and what that would mean for Chelsea. But before I do give you a lot of the lowdown in these news stories, I want to request that you do subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, please do hit the bell notifications icon. Like the video if you want to help me out. <laughs> Also, do you like football? Do you like Chelsea? Do you like tactics? Do you like video games? Oh yeah, sweet. Click on the link in the top of the description down there. Go subscribe to Yan Plays because I have just started by popular demand Football Manager 20. I'm going to start streaming it every evening. It's loads of fun. It's an interactive series where I enlist your help to help me develop an excellent Chelsea team. So go subscribe. Right, Chelsea news stories. Before we talk about Kante and the exits, let's talk about this potential new striker that's been identified by Chelsea. From France, no, it's not Moussa and Bele, it is Josh Madja. Madja is a 20-year-old English Nigerian striker who had his youth career in England, actually, and even was on Sunderland's books. And I believe, as well, Crystal Palace in Fulham. So he's no stranger to Fulham. But the 20-year-old is out playing in League 1, for Bordeaux. He's been a sort of rotational striker at the moment, but the young lad has five goals and two assists in just five starts. These seven goal involvements work out to a contribution every 84 minutes in the league, which is excellent, especially for a player who's working as an impact player. If Chelsea are looking for a really, really effective impact player, mm -hmm. Now, obviously, loads of people are calling for an elite striker like Timo Werner to really put the pressure on Tammy Abraham, but the truth is, Giroud does look like he's going in January. The truth also is, Frank Lampard very much goes for this, like, striker coming on for a striker for the last 20 minutes of a game. I heard something quite interesting from analysts that this statistically always works in terms of putting on a striker whether you're winning or you're losing if you put them on for the last 20 minutes there's a psychological and fatigue thing that actually always benefits your side whether you're defending or attacking. Frank Lampard obviously subscribes to this theory and he wants a really good impact striker. Now we know Olivier Giroud does not fit the mold of what he wants at all and that's fine he's gonna go but he's playing Michy Betchouai pretty much almost every game. He's getting decent minutes. I think Lampard does like Michy. I think he thinks he works really hard and he's a good finisher. But still, I'm not entirely sure he's in the player profile of what he wants for his project. And to Josh Madger. Josh could come in young, 20 years old, a couple, even a couple of years younger than Tammy Abraham, score goals like he's been doing off the bench and you know limited minutes and assisting as well, remember. He's not too selfish. And maybe starting in cup competitions and if he does really well, then Tammy Abraham might be sweating just a little bit and upping his game. Now, this is no criticism on Tammy Abraham saying he's bad. I believe he's actually been suffering poor service of late from his teammates. But it's a good thing to have that striker that comes on and score goals. It might make your first choice centre forward run a little bit more before that 65, 70 minute mark, knowing that, oh God, he's coming. Let's put everything into this because I'm at risk here. Personally, I think it's a good buy. This is one of those player profiles that seem realistic. Think about it. Didier Deschamps has recently come out again, the coach of France, and saying nothing has changed. Olivier Giroud has to leave Chelsea. He's my lead striker. I, I need him to play football. He has to leave Chelsea. There's just no other way. I get that. So he's going. Also, it does look like Pedro is leaving Chelsea as well. He had a little, little chance in the first 11. It looked like it's not going to work. If he does get this chance to go to Aston Villa or indeed back to Spain, gone in January also. Now, if people are realistic in January signings and thinking, look, man, we're not going to get these Galacticos. Jaden Sancho won't be released for a bidding war until the summer. 
Timo Werner's through to the next round of the Champions League. What do you do? Well, the truth is people get ripped off in January, but Chelsea might have two really, really reasonably priced options here to just see them out to the end of the season, carry on their project, don't upset the apple cart too much, yet bring in quality. So maybe you do bring in Josh Madger from Bordeaux. Maybe he will cost like a couple of million, you know, maybe up to five. He's a second choice rotational striker for a league earn sign that's not at the top of the league. That's not gonna cost much money. And instead of trying to get Sancho, which you can't at the moment, and trying to replace Pedro with him, obviously Sancho would be starting. You go to someone like Jeremy Boga, who Chelsea have a 3.5 million buyback clause on. Boga could absolutely be a rotational striker, come off the bench, start FA Cup competitions, and try and muscle his way back into the team. Suddenly, you're looking at two decent rotational options for under 10 million, well under 10 million probably. Rather than spending 150 million on one player, mid-season unsettled, can't settle into the new team, inflated price for a whole multitude of regions. You catch my drift. So people need to be prepared for these realistic obtainable options. A lot of people see Zaha as a realistic alternative to Sancho, but probably it will be a waste of money. Right, moving on to the potential N'Golo Kante exit and the story that's been released in Spain by publication Els Marca. Apologies to all the Spanish speaking viewers. Right, Kante is often said, I love Chelsea. Why well, I don't want to leave Chelsea. But he's a humble, sweet man. I don't think he'd ever say anything derogatory to the club who are paying his wages, but he often is linked with a move away. I get it. A lot of publications leak it to the press, try and unsettle the player, the agents get involved. This is normal in the football player transfer business. But it would not surprise anyone in world football if both Barcelona and Real Madrid are interested in the Frenchman and this is the reported story that it is both the Spanish giants. Now if reports are to be believed that either one of these are possible, you'd think it would be Real Madrid. They're probably a little bit more prestigious at the moment. Zinedine Zidane, French legend, is at the helm and obviously he'd be teaming up with uh, two ex-teammates in Courtois and Eden Hazard, and also there's other French speakers like Karim Benzema at the club, and Varane, etc. Now, Chelsea fans will always recoil at the news stories of, you know, Kante being linked with an exit, but the truth is, as amazing as this player is, and he is indeed Chelsea's only world-class player, there's kind of a little bit of an Eden Hazard effect at the moment where Kante does show moments of brilliance, but Chelsea need to get better as a cohesive unit as a team for their project to work going forward. Now, I'm not saying that can't work with N'Golo Kante, it absolutely can work. If anything, it was gonna be more difficult to work with someone like Ed Nazard. Of course, Chelsea miss him, but I've maintained on football therapy, Chelsea will always develop better as a team, as a collective, without Hazard. Again, I'm not saying this is the case to N'Golo Kante, I'm just saying Chelsea are no longer a one-player team. Now, if these reports are to be believed, the next summer, Kante will be 29 going on 30. Kante is the kind of player that relies on his engine to run around the pitch like he has done the last few years. Now, obviously, this kind of player attribute starts to decline in your 30s. He's also suffered the first real injury crisis of his career at the end of last season and the beginning of this season, making Chelsea a little bit more wary of how they use him and they wrap him up in cotton wool a little bit more. And finally, Kante will demand an astronomical transfer fee in the summer due to still being on a huge contract for probably another three years at that point, I think. When did he sign a new contract? Three or four years? Either way, a long contract. So you're looking at £120 million pounds plus. Chelsea have got a lot of good midfielders. Chelsea's midfield options of both Kovacic and Jorginho playing together look very good. Kovacic is actually very similar to Kante in many ways, especially now he starts scoring goals and he's a good bubble progressor and dribbler. Sure, he's not quite as good as a tackler or interceptor as Kante, but we've got Kovacic who's younger and very, very good. Chelsea have also got other young options coming back into the team. I know he's not playing at the moment, but there is a huge talent in Ethan Ampadu, who's a good destroyer midfielder, interceptor, and is very young and sort of matches the psychological profile of young players that Frank Lampard wants. And Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who I know is a different kind of player again, but he's a big, strong, dominating midfielder who can attack as well as defend and basically hold up the ball. So what did Chelsea do? Do they take a player who they love, who's still really world-class, very talented, very humble, good for PR because he's got a superb image? keep him as a world-class player or do they cash in a mega amount of bucks looking at the pros of his sale in this instance 
I just wanted to pitch the concept to you guys, the viewer, and get your thoughts on the subject. So please do get in the comment section down below and let me know your thoughts and opinions on a potential N'Golo Kante exit after you consider all the points that I've talked about. Let me know your thoughts on both Maja and Boga as well as potential January transfer signings for Chelsea. Do you think that would be a good idea? Good rotational players? Get down in the comments, let me know. Remember to like the video if you've enjoyed the content today and subscribe to Football Therapy if you are indeed new to the channel. And remember, subscribe to Yan Plays. Link is in the top of the description to come and join Football Manager with yours truly. It's loads of fun. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. That's it, guys. I'm out. You lot enjoy the football. I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I